one final one to end on. Just like a clear Sally Canthoma. Clear Sally Canthoma, benign and beautiful, yep. And it's another one that's got that, you can see that's where the lesion ends. It's just a super sharp cutoff. Sometimes you can see a couple cutoffs, like right here. See, it has like one area here, it's sharply cut off, then it stops, normal epidermis, and then it goes back <clears throat> into more of the lesion. I've seen that happen multiple times before. You get acanthosis, pallor, often with spongiosis. Some people like to call these pale cell acanthoma because of the, they're not really clear again, but um, we have lots of things that are misnomers in pathology, so I just accept it. And then the epidermis at the top lacks a granular layer, has perikeratosis, and usually has scattered neutrophils. So it really has a lot of features, neutrophils here too, a lot of features similar to psoriasis in a way. It's like a single plaque of pale epidermis with psoriasis-like changes. Often, in, in my experience, they're often on like the shin, the lower leg. But the other thing is, I think that no one ever taught me this that I can recall, but sometimes clear cell acanthoma and trichelomoma and inverted follicular keratosis can have overlapping features. So I feel like I've had multiple cases where I've ended up with those three entities in my differential diagnosis. Um, you know, if it's on the face, it's probably less likely to be a clear cell acanthoma. They're all benign things, it doesn't matter. But I feel like I've seen plenty of cases where those kind of mimicked each other and I never thought of those three things in a differential together. Obviously this one's clear cut, no, um, no pun intended, but an easy diagnosis to make here. And with that, 11 minutes late only, which for me is like being early, have a nice Friday and enjoy your weekend. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome.